bridesmaid who participated in the bridezilla wedding, what happened? Story one. The bride insisted that we, bridesmaids, do all the decorations, but she got mad because they didn't meet her high standards. All this a month before the wedding because she was delaying everything. I wanted to plan the wedding party myself because I thought we were incompetent. For the bachelorette party, we went to a decently fancy restaurant and the bride was pissed because her little sister, the bridesmaid who was no help at all, only ate plain food, so we should have just gone to McDonald's. To this day, she continues to say that she wants to play the wedding again because of how horribly it turned out. There's a lot more to it, but I'm giving myself away. We're still friends. By saying all that, haha. It was bad timing, and I don't want a wedding myself after being involved in that disaster. Edited for correct grammar. Story 2. My best friend got married, and she was very calm throughout the planning process and on the wedding day. However, the day after the wedding, she texted me and sarcastically said, Thank you for the wedding gift. I planned to get her a gift with my next paycheck. However, I was so shocked that she texted me, especially after I spent $800, dress, alterations, shoes, nails, makeup, hair, hotel room, etc., to be at her wedding. All she seemed to care about were the presents. Story 3. This isn't exactly what you asked for, but I had a bridesmaid who brought a lot of negative energy to our wedding. She was my husband's sister. She had just broken up with her boyfriend again, so a few days before our wedding, she was very jealous and abusive towards us. It didn't help that she stayed with us the whole week before our wedding. Most of our family members live outside the city. She treated us like crap the whole time, when she wasn't ignoring me, and having her around just added a lot of unnecessary stress. A few nights before our wedding, she got drunk and cried to my husband about how it was supposed to be her wedding. Based on her logic, she's older, so she should have gotten married first. She then told my husband that she could have a better wedding than ours for only $200. At the wedding, several members of my family overheard her and her best friend, who we graciously invited even though we didn't know her well, complaining about everything and criticizing our wedding. We had a non-traditional mountaintop wedding ceremony followed by a reception in a luxurious log cabin by the river. We had a total of 85 guests, and in addition to the usual wedding stuff, we had lawn games and a bonfire. My cell and her best friend kept saying our wedding was cheap and tacky. Most of my husband's family showed up in jeans, t-shirts, flip-flops, baseball caps, etc. Although we didn't tell anyone that the dress code was casual, we suspect my SEL told everyone to wear casual clothes. We are a little disappointed that no one bothered to consult us. Edit, our dress code was not casual. We assumed that people would show up in semi-formal attire, so we didn't specify a dress code in our invitations. Sorry I didn't put it better. On top of all that, my SIL didn't give us a gift, but she invited us to dinner a few days after the wedding as her gift. Turns out she also invited a couple of friends she met at a local bar and ignored me the entire time. Even when I tried to join the conversation, she just kept going, Did someone say something? I could have sworn I heard something. By the end of the night, I was on the verge of tears. My husband and I feel that his sister ruined our wedding. We paid for everything, and we spent a year and a half planning everything ourselves just to have her cow on it. My husband wants to renew the wedding someday in the form of a vow renewal. We will invite only those people we really want there. This is going to be so cool. I can't wait. Story 4. This wedding is in about two weeks. A bride recently asked me if I mind without makeup, because only the maid of honor and her really wear makeup. I was angry and confused. The bride never wears makeup. At the last bachelorette party, I suggested that we play around with makeup and see what you would like for your wedding. She refused, saying she wasn't going to wear it. What kind of request is this? Do you think the other women at the wedding aren't going to wear makeup? In normal everyday life, your pyramid scheme makeup wears green makeup. What do you think she will wear to your crazy wedding? Story 5. Brother of the bride who registered, I was at the party because our father passed away. I gave her away at the ceremony. After the rehearsal, everyone returned to her house before dinner. Our mom, a master baker, was putting the finishing touches on a wedding cake while undergoing chemotherapy for ball cancer and barely holding a bag of frosting. My sister notices that some little thing isn't good enough and stands there, red-faced, yelling at her mother that she's ruining her wedding and her life. About twenty guests look on in disbelief. I yelled at her. Hey, do you want to walk down the aisle with two cool eyes? My aunt took my sister by the hand and took her to another room to chat. It seemed to cool her down a bit. The ceremony went off without a hitch. The reception was fun, and the cake was beautiful. No one remembers the event now. Story 6. I am watching the development of events. One friend is getting married at the beginning of the year. Her ex-best girl is very jealous since friend A got back together with her husband and was actually happy. 
So, let's call her B and it will become clear why she met a guy at the beginning of summer. Within weeks, she gave up the lease and moved in with him. Think three weeks. Not even six months have passed since they got engaged. Since A got engaged a few weeks ago, B got engaged last week. B, you just had to give her a date earlier than A. She must get married first. The only planning she did? She booked a hideous party room in a derelict council house. She could wait, save money, and have a decent wedding on a budget. But no, B has to get married first so she can rub it in A's face that she is happier. God, oh no. My money is on B announcing her pregnancy at A's appointment. Story 7. The bride was someone I'd known since college, about a dozen years at this point. She wanted all of her bridesmaids, mother and future mother-in-law at David's wedding to help her choose her dress. We were there for six hours. She later decided she didn't like the $1,500 dress she picked out and went back for another one. The first one has already been changed, so it cannot be returned. Then she went back a third time because she didn't like the second dress either. So she bought a total of three wedding dresses for this wedding. She made us buy bright neon pink strapless floor-length dresses for $200 and insisted we pay super expensive David's bridal prices for consistency. Like the other bridesmaids listed here, I was told that my hair must remain natural and that I must have professional hair, makeup, and nails for the wedding. She is a trust fund and refused to pay for all of this. One of her best friends had blue hair, and she was very upset that she had to change her image to match the wedding, and it caused some drama. I'm not sure if her friend was allowed to attend the wedding after all. As I was fired before the big day, she threw three separate bridal parties and expected her bridesmaids to show up to each one with gifts. I got group texts for these events, and I spent weeks having people reply to all the messages with their stupid comments and questions. There was at least one shower on Saturday, and she informed us on Thursday that our presence was mandatory. Her maid of honor told me she was very busy and couldn't organize a bachelorette party and asked if she would mind helping me. I was unemployed and said I would be happy to help plan. Well, I guess they thought I was paying for everything. The Ministry of Health provided me with a guest list and asked me to send an invitation by email. The bride called me screaming because it was tacky to send the invitations, and I should have made the actual invitations. Note the fact that she sent the invitations via text message. She was also mad that the guest list included people she didn't like, and that I should have let her see the guest list beforehand. I got it from her best friend and the MOH. How could I know? She insisted that I buy all of my party favors from a boutique event store in an affluent part of town. Again, I was unemployed. When I told her I couldn't afford it and was just helping to plan, I got yelled at and kicked out of the party. That same week, I got a message that I was fired as a bridesmaid and asked to give her the dress so she could let her friend wear it. A dress that I paid $200 for plus the cost of alterations. I asked if she planned to pay me for it, and she said she would after the wedding. I knew it was a lie, so I told her to pound the sand. We never spoke again. Story 8. I wasn't a bridesmaid, but I was at a wedding where we had the bride, the girl, and the millzilla at the same time. My dad and I watched the run-up to the wedding go head-to-head -head from the very beginning. Millzilla and Maidzilla impress almost everyone with such incredible flaws as disheveled hair and small folds on clothes. Millzilla specifically threw a tantrum at me, saying my hair was a mess because I was sweating. It was 90-plus degrees at the California summer outdoor wedding. No cow, I sweated. Mazilla made the mistake of yelling at my dad that he was too tall for where he was supposed to stand in the photos. Unfortunately for her, dad was a drill sergeant in the 82nd for almost 10 years. The ensuing shouting match went one way and one way only. Wedding day. The ceremony goes well, much to my surprise, and we get to the party. Almost everyone is having a good time. With the exception of Bridezilla, who was intoxicated and did not perceive the music. The music she chose in advance. During the party, she got into at least four fights with the DJ, who eventually gave up, turned on the music, and came out on the patio to get drunk with me and the losers. Oh, and Maidzilla tried to offer my dad, who was a DEA agent at the time, some candy to come off the heat. It went well. Story 9. I've said this before, but whatever. I was asked to be a bridesmaid by a girl I knew in high school, but wasn't really friends with. After a few years, we worked together, but we weren't really friends outside of work. I said yes anyway. I was there throughout the planning. I went with her to wedding fairs, inspected the venue, helped her choose a dress, everything she needed. I was there. Anyway, she was always complaining about her other bridesmaids, how she only had a sister because her dad made her and her brothers a girl, etc. They did not help us to show any interest. Everything that could be booked and arranged in advance was taken care of in less than two months. 
The wedding was less than two years away, but she wanted to be ready. I agreed to pay for my dress as she was a bit stuck with cash. We agreed that 100 pounds was reasonable if I could wear the dress again. I found some good ones online for around 80 pounds. She bought one for 30 pounds and it was awful Chinese rubbish. She sent him back. Then I didn't hear from her for several months. I figured we still had years to plan and just waited for her to get in touch. When she did, she asked for photos of her trying on the dresses, so I sent them and reassured her that I was excited to be a part of her special day. She quieted down a bit and explained that she thought I was out. I was shocked and asked why when I was there every step of the way until now, and she didn't try to contact me. She mumbled a little and said she had tried, but I knew she hadn't. Anyway, she said they all came out and suggested bridesmaid dresses. If I went to the fitting before Friday, not possible I was away, I could still get mine. I asked for a photo of the dress. It was awful, like a washed pink nightgown. We've all said we wish we had a dress that could wear a bra. We couldn't do that at all, and I'm the last person you'll see wearing pink. So much for being able to wear it again. But I sucked and asked how much. 350 pounds. Crazy. I was furious that she kicked me out of the wedding in the first place and then expected me to pay for such an ugly dress that I couldn't even afford. Needless to say, I was not a bridesmaid and did not go to the wedding. Story 10. I was a bridesmaid at my father and stepmother's wedding. I was 16. The problem was not so much the wedding day as the preparation and planning. She spent eight months before the wedding trying to get me to lose weight for the wedding photos. The closer we got to him, the more aggressive she was. In the end, my dad also supported me. I started dieting for my wedding, but I was angry and unhappy the whole time. Everything I ate was commented on. If she brought home dinner, she would always ask what I wanted and then say, you shouldn't have that until the wedding. I wanted to get a haircut months before the planning started. She insisted that I do not, just in case something goes wrong, you know, for wedding photos. A week before the wedding, I cut and dyed my very faded hair. She was completely melting and screaming at me. Why? Because my hair was red and her bouquet had red accent flowers. Its general color scheme was silver red. She was angry that I was going to bump the scenery in the photos. When we went to get the bridesmaid dresses, she brought her friends and ignored me the whole time. She asked one of the workers to bring me a dress, and when I asked for a bigger size, she lost her cow again. We got home and she yelled at my dad about it who in turn attacked me for breaking my promise to lose weight. The wedding took place. I'm only in two pictures. Our relationship is much better now. A few months ago, she said she didn't know why our photographer wasn't taking pictures of me anymore. Okay. Story 11. Oh my, Bridezilla's wedding basically came down to her mom, her sister, and me planning everything. The bride had no money, so her mom paid for everything. She also couldn't make any decisions, so the three of us tried to come up with ideas for a general theme. A beach wedding with sunset colors so that her wedding wouldn't be diluted. My sister and I were tasked with putting together the shower and bachelorette party because the other bridesmaids couldn't afford to attend and just showed up at some of the events. On the day of the wedding, my sister, myself, mom, and my fiancé were the first to get up and head to the venue. The bride got drunk the night before and fell asleep. When she got up, she just lay there until a group of her friends showed up to walk by and come over. The trouble started when her mom ordered a small tent to cover the guests from the sun, it was a late summer beach wedding. The bride said she didn't want one because it would be unsightly. It would block the view. It didn't. And that it would block being outside. It didn't either. Mom decided to put it in anyway. Her money and she put down the down payment a while ago because it was supposed to rain first. The groom tells me to tell the bride what is going on to give her time to get ready. So I go to her hotel room and tell her the tent is being packed. She immediately starts freaking out, yelling at me about it. I'm just shocked at her behavior and tell her to calm down because she can't change the situation and just enjoy the rest of the time to get ready. She continues to yell at me for being so rude and disrespecting her at her wedding until one of her friends flat out tells her, look you bad person just calm down and hands the bride a joint. I leave and the bride avoids me, her sister and her mother for the rest of the day. After the wedding, I went to the bridesmaid who called the bride a bad person and looked into what was going on and was told that the bride was mostly talking about me and her family when I left the room. Long story short, I'm not friends with her anymore. Story 12. Can I chat about my bridesmaid instead? Her. Aren't you going to invite me to your wedding? Me. Uh, it's halfway around the world and I'm going to have two weddings in both countries. But it's okay if you want to come to the other one. You can be my bridesmaid. She, oh my God. But make sure you get married in the summer. I don't want to go there until the fall season. I'm good. It would have to depend on my own schedule, but I'll see if I can think of something. Her, and you will have to pay for my plane ticket and living expenses. I also want to see the sights in another city. 
the capital, so you will have to think about accommodation there. Me, I'm already paying for the tickets for my whole family, eight of them, so I'm a little short on money. I can provide housing, and you can stay as long as you want, but it will only be in the city where I live, not in the capital. Her LOL, I won't be your bridesmaid if you can't even give me that. I told her that I also released her from her other bridesmaid role, and she could just come to another wedding if she still wanted to. Story 13. Not a bridesmaid, the wife was the bride's cousin. It happened a few months ago. The girl is a few days before the wedding, my wife didn't go, but her sister and other family did. There are a couple of strippers, a lot of alcohol. Suddenly the bridesmaids realize that the bride has disappeared. They find her in a hotel with one of the strippers, who happens to be. She goes crazy and tells everyone that she was attacked. The cops are coming. The stripper was detained. The wedding has been canceled. Sorry, everyone. The detective on the case doesn't believe her story, and the bride is finally accused. Her mom and my wife's mom still believe that the stripper legitimately assaulted her. Story 14. After paying $250 for a dress and a color I hate, being dragged around all day without food, we finally got to the wedding after pictures, etc., and the people at the wedding were served meatloaf. Not just meat cuts, flipping food. And it wasn't even enough for wedding services, not to mention the rest of the guests. People ordered pizza to the werewolf establishment. Before that, I got engaged and didn't tell anyone because I didn't want to spoil her big day. A few days after the wedding, I told the newly married bride who kept on just to stop talking to me. More than three years have passed. There were also three other people at her wedding with whom she no longer communicates. Well, you're the one who has to look back at these pictures and remember all the people you treated like cows. Fast forward to my wedding a year later. My mother flipped so horribly that I really want to do it all over again. She literally made the whole event about herself. There were very few guests and mostly her friends. She was a bad person the whole time and basically made me cry every day leading up to it. Story 15. My best friend is a stripper. She was hired to make a joint bachelorette party organized by the bride. It quickly became clear that she had set this up so she could watch her fiancé to make sure he wasn't having too much fun. The whole time she sat on his lap forcing him to watch their mutual friend's lap dance. My friend was told that if she needed to talk to the groom, she should talk to the bride instead. She arrived at the venue to find the bride shouting at her friends to pose for pictures with the strippers, or they were going to ruin everything. She was the most domineering bride my friend had ever seen. Her husband could not even drink without asking. She kept telling him to smile. The best man joked with my friend that she was so good that they would invite her to speak at the divorce, because a man would not live like this for long. Story 16. I wasn't a bridesmaid, but the bride was extremely controlling and prone to panic attacks. If people didn't respond to invitations to showers, bachelorette parties, weddings before the specified date, she had a mental breakdown. If the response date was October 1st, she panicked on September 20th. The bridesmaids had to call people and tell them the bride was scared and having panic attacks because they hadn't answered yet, so they needed an answer today. Story 17. Found out I was pregnant a couple of weeks after she made the appointment. My due date was six days before the wedding, which also happened to be a six-hour drive away. She asked me to hold off trying to get pregnant until after the wedding, which was obviously ridiculous. So she got incredibly mad at me and kept it from me throughout my pregnancy, and didn't invite me to the wedding. I was supposed to be maid of honor. She even talked about me in the next bed at her bachelorette party, which I went to anyway even though I was seven months pregnant. She thought I was asleep. Her grandmother also passed away around the same time I got pregnant, and I think she took all her anger out on me for not having her grandmother there for her big day. Amazingly, our friendship survived the ordeal, and she has since apologized profusely and admitted that she had unfairly accused me. She is currently trying to get pregnant, despite the fact that our other best friend is getting married soon, and we are both at the wedding. Story 18. Okay, may I offer another perspective? I was maid of honor at my sister's wedding. My sister, who has the patience of a saint, was the calmest and most relaxed of us all. The bridesmaids, however, turned into the zill of the wedding. I spent all my time leading up to the wedding driving everyone around, because they kept changing plans about where to park their cars, who had what stuff in what car, etc. Because the plans changed so many times, I was so exhausted at the reception, and my legs were bleeding from having to run to different cars over and over again because the bridesmaids forgot who had what in whose car. Because, like I said, they are always changed the plan before, so no one had a clear idea of the test. It was the happiest and worst day of my life at the same time. Man, it's nice to talk about it. Story 19. I have had colored hair for many years. It's quite an investment. I go to a salon to do it and buy high-quality products. 
When my best friend asked me to be her ministry of health, my hair was neon pink. Three weeks before her wedding, she asked me to dye her hair a natural color. I was shocked. She offered to give me $100 to do it, lol. I just got my hair done. Plum red. Pretty tame compared to what I've done in the past. If I just randomly went from brown to lime green out of nowhere, I could understand her frustration. But at this point, I haven't seen my natural color in about three years. I never changed my hair. We had a fight at her bachelorette party, and she drunkenly told me that her mom hated my hair and kept complaining about it. We cried and hugged in the bathroom of the club, and everything was fine. Her mom didn't talk to me at the wedding, and I don't agree with that. Story 20. Edit. One extra tidbit for you guys. After I got her ring, my then-boyfriend and I were looking at rings, and I picked one out and told him, This is my ring. She immediately asked to try it on, even though she already had it, and said, Oh, it's great. Maybe I'll ask for it as a gift. BFF weddings with high maintenance costs still give me nightmares. At the last wedding I attended, I considered this couple to be very close friends of mine. I still love them dearly. But something changed in my friend when she was planning her wedding. She wanted this incredible fairy tale princess wedding, and it would cost her bridal party dearly. I think the whole thing, plus the rings, cost them over $100K. Just some points, demanded at least three, four nights for her bachelorette. Then the bachelor in town for anyone who couldn't take the expensive peach trip she'd been dreaming of. We are in Canada. She wanted to fly to Hawaii. Her wedding wasn't even in town. Nothing was ever good enough. Asked me to plan her bridal shower as MOH two inches. What's that? Because her MOH lived out of town and her sister couldn't delegate to save her life. I knew she loved Disney, didn't drink, and wanted to be a princess, and was a little nervous, so I suggested an Alice in Wonderland-themed tea party. She got upset that I asked women to dress up for nine whole years with hats, wizards, etc., and said, well, Alice in Wonderland is my least favorite Disney story, FML, asked my dining recommendation as I eat out too much for my wallet. I asked her about her dietary restrictions. She was on keto for the wedding, and she's like, fine, that's the only exception. And she said that she would be satisfied with the restaurant that I chose. I asked, are you sure because this restaurant takes a $200 deposit because our party is so big on my CC? She says, I will never change my mind. I waited 24 hours to make this reservation. She changed her mind. I refused to plan anything further. So one of the other bridesmaids stepped in with ideas for her bachelor party in town and suggested a comedy show as one of the activity. Everyone is very excited. The bride falls asleep. We sat in the front. I have never been so ashamed. The wedding was outside the city in a resort hotel. She rents suites, and the cost is divided between the rooms. Fair. I rent two because I'm there with my sisters, and at the last minute, she asks if I mind giving up one for one night because her henna lady needs to stay in the ladies' room. Well, no, Beth can sleep on the couch. I paid for these rooms. Calls me MOH2. Makes me work. Write a speech. But when it comes time to introduce her bridesmaids... She forgets she has two MOHs. Anything, now I'm just petty. I could go on and on and on. I calculated early on that if we had done everything she wanted, the whole wedding would have cost me $3,000. $3,000! Thank God that there was never a foreign bachelor. I still have PTSD from it. I can't even attend a wedding without feeling terrified. Sorry for such a long rant, but I will never forget the years of life I lost to this nightmare. Edit. Details spelling. Story 21. That's absolutely minor in the context of this thread, but for the size of the wedding and the age we all were, 19, pretty flashy. First, she insisted that her bridesmaids match the dress. I appreciate egalitarianism, my friend. But you have seven bridesmaids, from a young Republican Pentecostal to a left-wing atheist boy. And we all knew we wouldn't agree, so we told her ahead of time to pick something she liked, within a reasonable price, and buy it. She refused. As a result, we spent several hours arguing about dresses. The ceremony itself lasted 15 minutes. The reception lasted eight, nine hours. I stayed the whole time and took care of the rest of the newlyweds and half of the brides because I was the only sober person in the place. I drove home people I didn't know at all. They broke up about four months later. In retrospect, it wasn't as bridezilla as it was more. Total train wreck. Story 22. I'm not a bridesmaid. I'm a wedding DJ. My job during the ceremony is to play music. Usually. The bride chooses another special song for the ceremony, such as family seating, wedding exit, bridal exit, etc. I need to know when to play which song, so I always get everyone together and make sure I understand the order of events at the ceremony. Then when they're ready, I start playing music and they come in. As I was explaining this concept to the group, 
Bridezilla interrupted me and yelled, Drop it, everyone just go, and she started pushing the bridesmaids into the chapel, and the whole group followed her, and they all just walked in like hell and stood at the altar. No music. She was mad about something, but it wasn't me, and I never found out why she decided to crash her own wedding entrance. Story 23. Worked in the wedding DJ business for many years to earn extra money on the weekends. I specifically set a high price on myself to avoid paper plate and spaghetti, as I called them, weddings. Nothing wrong with that, but I had a top-notch event with a huge light rig, full digital audio before digital audio was big, absolutely top-notch Mackie speakers, subwoofers, fog lights, lasers, DMX lighting rigs. I could turn your VFW hall into a top-class disco. I rated accordingly. Usually $1,400, $2,400 for a six-hour appointment. Note that this was 15 years ago or so. These prices and presentation have allowed me to host some of the more upscale weddings in my metro area, including five-star hotels and resorts, historic mansions, and more. I've rated myself at the weddings you've read about in wedding magazines. Word of mouth got me the rest of the way. I interviewed each couple before signing a contract for them. It was intentional. I could cut off bridegrooms. If I ever felt there was one in the game, I would start my price at $2,400. Normally, that would put them out of the running, but one day they agreed. Shrugs, money is money, and I can put up with any group of idiots for six hours, and I knew the photographer and the caterer so we could hang out and gossip about the couple. Well, this concert only lasted about two hours. The groom got angry, and the bride got angry about it, and ended up in a fist fight with one of the bridesmaids. Wait, what? As fine. The best man was also a bad face and told a story during the groom's toast about when he and the groom were roommates. He would walk in on the bride and groom when they were having weird butts and how funny it was and how they kept bumping and how he even had another one of her friends once for a three-way. The bride, as he understood, was quite a bad person, a worker, and would have killed anyone if she had had a couple of drinks. The bride's parents were horrified. But the best thing is the reason for the fight? It wasn't the bride who was a bad person. It was actually an old friend of the groom who the bride hated, like a deep, seething, raw, pure white hatred. The bride ran across the dance floor and rushed after the best man. And one of the bridesmaids was his wife. She soon caught up with her. I managed to save my wireless microphone before it was thrown away. But the police soon arrived and the event was shut down. Torn dresses, dirty tuxedos, overturned tables. I still got paid because my clients paid in advance. It was freaking epic! Story 24. I was a bridesmaid at my sister's wedding. It is strung very high normally, so at the wedding it was simply thrown from above. We were getting ready, and I have extremely straight hair that cannot be curled. The hairdresser couldn't get it to stay curled, and my sister starts yelling at me for crashing her wedding because of my stupid hair. My mom jumped in and forced my hair into curls with one to a bottle of hairspray. Then my sister accuses me of ruining her makeup because she cried over my hair. I pray to God she never marries again. Story 25. Maid of Honor, the bride, tried to crash her own wedding because, although both the groom and she were raised Catholic, she hates the Catholic Church, and he doesn't. When he asked for a Catholic wedding instead of turning her down, she agreed, and instead tried to destroy it from within. Highlights. Almost no planning, including tearing down the centerpieces my wife created for our upcoming wedding. In particular, ordered me to wear a suit. Butch Sapphic, instead of pants and a blouse because she never used my real name with the priest, only my androgynous moniker. She got ridiculously drunk at the rehearsal dinner. There was no rehearsal on the day of Sohe, because she never planned a real rehearsal, attended Catholic classes, or showed up for a mock rehearsal, and was 45 minutes late to the wedding, unbeknownst to the priest. Am I a boy or a girl? And instead of making a mistake, he simply gestured me to my altar with an angry wave of his hand. Come, and, uh, hmm. She then held the reception while secretly smoking. She told her parents I was a smoker, even though I smoked 1.5 years ago, in a back alley while the groom entertained. They are now divorced. She spent the rest of the marriage on his couch. I asked her not to be in my wedding party. The groom was in my bridal party, but he's still a good friend.